family. It's time for a fun interview with an Ask Tamily star that actually was in an interview before. So this is interview 133 and Emily Hansen is our guest today. She was actually interview 13 and so it's exciting to kind of see the evolution of Ask Tamily from interview 13 to 133. She will be connecting with us in just a moment. Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining us for the second time, Emily. We're super excited to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I can't believe that you were interview 13 and now you're interview 133. I feel like that was way back um, when I was a brand new baby Tammer. <laughs> and now I'm still a baby Tammer, but just older. Oh, you are absolutely not a baby Tamer, you crazy advanced no, it... <laughs> I'm not sure that many people uh, figure out ways to continue working out with broken bones and such. <laughs> You're not a baby Tamer. <laughs> um, well, what we're going to do is start with some planned questions, but we'll also take questions live in the chat. So. Anyone watching can type a question in at any time. And especially since we interviewed you in the past, Emily, we're gonna start with something a little different. We would like to know where you live and why you always talk about boobs. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Um, boobs are my favorite thing to talk about, but before I start with that, <laughs> um, I live in St. Pete, Florida. It's just outside of Tampa and I've been here for I don't know, seven years or something like that. It's kind of a time warp, but um, the good news is there's free heat and humidity. So I don't really have to pay extra to get that going in my garage, <laughs> except for lately, it's been a little bit chilly. Um, but I, the reason I'm so passionate about talking about breasts and trying to remind women to get comfortable and get familiar with yourself and know your own normal is um, breast cancer is a huge issue nationwide, not just here in the US, of course, and, and we know several of our own family members that have been affected. Um, and particularly right now, during the pandemic, um, breast cancer screenings are down 40%, which means diagnoses are down 40%. And what that doesn't mean, unfortunately, is that 40% fewer women have breast cancer, it just means that they don't know that they have it. So the best thing that you can do is get comfortable, um, know yourself, know your normal breast, know what um, kind of every day feels like. That way you can pay attention to changes and be proactive about your care. Because while mammograms are great um, and they help a lot, you know, they're not always going to detect everything. Um, so it's really important for you to check, get familiar. If you've got any concerns, definitely make an appointment, go see your doctor and go get checked out. I won't go through like a whole <laughs> demo of how to do a self-exam, but I would put a PSA out there. If anybody watching doesn't really know what to look for, what to check for, kind of how to do it, DM me. I'd be happy to kind of go through the process. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody gets comfortable with it. So please check your boobs. Um, I usually will send out a reminder on the first of every month just because it's a convenient time. Mm -hmm. And like a regular date, that's what I put on my calendar for a reminder, and then you just get to it. Yeah, definitely. And it's not just something to think about, you know, in October, we have to be aware yeah. of that. That is an interesting fact that, you know, I don't know that people think about like a lot of medical screenings and just normal checkups, annual appointments, people have you know, either I had to cancel them or move them because of the pandemic, but also just not proactively going out and doing those kind of things at this time, just like we're not doing a lot of other things, but. Yeah, we get really help. comfortable um, staying at home, but unfortunately cancer doesn't like quarantine away as well. <laughs> and this goes for, you know, all kinds of cancer. You should check your skin and make sure that you're getting your freckles looked at and things like that. Anything new um, that pops up, you just got to get comfortable with your with your body and pay attention um, as it changes and as you age. 
So yeah, definitely. Well, um, we will step into some of our Tracy Anderson method questions as well and want to ask how long you have been doing the method, especially since it's been 120 weeks since your last interview. <laughs> <laughs> so I've probably been doing the method going on four years. Um, I I really got into it when I started streaming. I had, you know, bought continuity um, I started with metamorphosis and then bought continuity, but streaming was where it was at. I just feel like it was engaging. The music was good. Um, it just felt like it had more flow. Not to say that continuity is easy because that shit looks so hard. I never made yeah. it past like six months of it. <laughs> and then I was like, here I come streaming. I'm not, I'm not ready <laughs> to do this for four and a half years, like some mm -hmm. other champions that have finished it. But um, yeah. And I think when I started, I was, you know, dabbling, doing other things. Um, I don't know, maybe doing like two or three days a week. And now I pretty much do it every day, unless if I don't feel good, then I will take a break. Um, but I used to have to take breaks for work when I would travel, but now I've gone nowhere an entire year. It feels <laughs> really weird. <laughs> so I don't really have to be like, oh, well, I got to get up and go to the airport. It's just groundhog day slash groundhog year. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you think that you, once everything is, you know, in the past, if that ever happens with the pandemic, um, will you go back to traveling to that extent or at least to some certain extent? Some extent. I mean, I need to personally for, for my own sanity. So even if it's not required as much for work, um, because I feel like a lot of it, you know, I figured out how to do remotely, but part of what I used to do when I was traveling is going to like breast cancer events, educational events with patients, um, going and working with surgeons, training surgeons, watching actual surgeries. So some of that you can't really, uh -huh. you can't do as well remotely, but yeah. like on a personal level, I can't wait to travel and just like get the hell out of here. <laughs> <Go somewhere else>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go everywhere. And I'm like, Oh man, I, I don't know. It's not, not for me to like be at home forever. I like some balance. So when you do get back to traveling, how will you keep the method um, as part of your regular routine? So I, I feel like I got some really good experience of how to do it when I was traveling so much before um, I was that kind of weirdo at the airport with my ankle weights and my hand weights and all my stuff. I always say Tam travels heavy, <laughs> but the, the biggest rule is don't, um, don't put it like in your checked luggage because you'll get searched, you know, no matter what. So I was always prepared. I would just have like a separate special bag I could pull out immediately with my weights and do all that. But I think it's, um, you just got to find a time that works. Unfortunately, the time that seems to work best when you're traveling is first thing in the morning, which I don't, I don't love. <laughs> there was many mornings, um, you know, being up at 4.15 just to fit it in, take a shower and then like get to a hospital for surgery. But, you know, after a full day and then going to dinner, I never mm -hmm. had any type of um, like mental fortitude to be like, all right, now I'm going to get into TAM. <laughs> So yeah. it was morning or never for me um, on the road. Um, so Kristen has a question in the chat, which has to do with this subject. She said, um, you've traveled, traveled a lot and met so many family, which is so much fun. Um, how are you adapting to being home so much now? It's so sad. Um, and I love meeting family. <laughs> it's one of the things I miss. Um, and I want to do more Zoom type things, but I have to do so much of that for work that I get a ton of fatigue. So I try to like save it up. So tomorrow, anybody that wants to join like a TAM hip hop at nine in the morning Eastern time, you're welcome to come and join us. Um, you can DM me or um, yeah, just DM me and I'll send you the Zoom link. But, um, you know, I try to stay connected. I try to text. Um, um, a lover of memes or funny videos. So usually I'll try to let my sisters know I'm thinking of them <laughs> and send a little note. Um, and then sometimes, you know, we do plan fun, like virtual Zoom brunch or virtual happy hour or virtual tea. Um, so anything I can do, I have to get some kind of interaction, like mm -hmm. at least once a week. So that's usually my goal, but I can't wait till I can actually like hug people in person and give them a big squeeze. <laughs> well, and I know you've, you know, 
even just met like with one person and whether it had coffee or whatever, whenever you could. But um, in the post about your interview, we put a picture from um, the Chicago Tamley meetup. Yeah. Which was like the most legendary meetup that ever happened. <laughs> and then the quarantine happened. <laughs> I, know. I mean, it seemed insane to go to Chicago in February. Like, what were we all thinking? But I'm thankful every day for that. And just looking at the picture, I think there was maybe like a dozen of us in an elevator in that picture. And I was like, wow, I don't know that I've been that close to that many people <laughs> since that picture was taken. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like the energy from that meetup has like carried us through the pandemic, but we're going to have to have another one as soon as possible, as soon as we can. Yes, we're gonna have to have a huge blowout. That was so fun because, um, I mean, they're all so fun, but even people flew in from New York. I remember right after that, I had to fly to New York for um, mm -hmm. a fashion week event. And I flew back with um, Kat and um, Darlene, actually, which was just kind of cool. We happened to be on the same flight. And then as soon as I got home from that trip, it was like lockdown. We all thought, oh, how cute, just two weeks. Like, oh, let's order some fun, you know, pajamas or something like that. Little do we know, we're like still yeah. here, but it was an epic meetup and, you know, props to Cassie and Sintra for, A, convincing everyone that it was a super awesome idea to go to Chicago <laughs> and when it's like one degree out, um, but like coordinating just such a fun time. The dinner was fun. We celebrated birthdays even when we were there. It was, I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, as we're talking about it, and I'm thinking about what day it is today. I think we're almost at exactly the one year anniversary. Uh-huh. I think maybe it was February 8th or something. I think so. Eight that or nine, is crazy. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's all kinds of reasons for this interview. So we're almost <laughs> here for the meetup and 13 to 133. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, so... Tell us, Emily, how many Tamley members do you think you have actually met? Okay. So I've been thinking about this and also, you know, one of the great things about having an iPhone. So I have all these folders of like Tamley meetup and blah, blah, <laughs> blah. And I want to say I've met over 60 oh my Tamers God. so far. Not nearly enough, but right. it is fun to think about like, yeah, um, and it's cool that people are so willing to meet me. Like Arlene <laughs> picked me up from the airport, totally Aww. unknown. And um, even Rachel picked me up from the airport, unknown, like took me places. I'm just like, we're a very trusting bunch. <laughs> Perhaps I think we are. Um, but it's like, I always say it's uh, instant family slash instant friends. You know, we really do connect here. We have meaningful relationships and, um, you know, you got a friend wherever you're going to go. I guarantee mm -hmm. it. There's Tamily in every state. And I think Tracy says 50 countries or mm -hmm. something like that. So you got a friend. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I feel like we just feel connected because we all do the same workout that we yeah. trust each other. And luckily that works out. I mean, staying in hotel rooms with people you don't know and <laughs> oh, it's crazy, but yeah fun I can't wait to get back to it me too um what kind of challenges have you faced in doing the method <laughs> quite a few <laughs> um I, I feel like I need a crown that says like queen klutz because um so I've, I've broken a couple of toes very badly um not that long ago I think it was even in the pandemic <clears throat> and I think I had um seven fractures across three toes or something like that. Anyway, it, it sucked. It was like really bad. The benefit was I didn't have to travel anywhere. So I think I actually healed faster than if I was trying to mm -hmm. somehow get around. Um, but that was really tough. I mean, physically it was painful to deal with, but I think for me, I was just like, oh my God, I'm like, what am I going to do? So I think I took one day off and then I just said, I'm going to see what I can do barefoot. And I did a lot of arms, which actually kind of need to get back to that. Um, Cause it was great. It was just like a change of pace. I did some, some old content and I feel like where there's a will, there's a way you can kind of make it work. And you have to know for yourself, of course, you don't want to 
injure yourself more. Um, so I just basically stayed off that foot and didn't wear shoes for quite a while. And then recently <laughs> I was like, just getting on like the dance cardio train and finally learning some routines. Cause I, I, um, I got a spring floor and I tripped just like over myself. I don't even know, but it's why I don't really enjoy dances that have a lot of traveling. Cause I tripped over my own feet. Um, it sprained my ankle so bad. It was like, I had a a volleyball attached to my oh. foot or something. Um, so I feel like I'm about 90% from that. And I just, I got a lot of super cool, heavy duty ankle braces. And, um, you know, I would do start or I would do fundamental. I would just try to kind of look at the classes and see, you know, if there were certain moves that I would need to avoid or modify and just <laughs> make it work. But I feel like Physically, it was kind of limiting, but more it was just mentally, I felt like I still needed to move to feel like myself and not turn into a total lockdown crazy <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, there's nowhere else to go either. Um, so you just make it work. And I feel like that's kind of like anything in life. You're going to get curveballs. You're going to get sick. You're going to have an injury and you really need to kind of take stock and evaluate for yourself. What can you do? How can you move through it? Um, because time's going to pass anyway. So even though every week it's like, usually feels like the greatest week ever of classes and you're like, oh, I don't want to miss it. But you, the next week's going to be just as great. And so, so is the week after that. So make sure you take care of yourself um, so you don't do more damage or something like that, especially if you're noticing like um, pain in your knees or something like that, or just, you know, something joint related because you could really amplify that. And you don't want to just be like a, a stubborn punk <laughs> and keep going and then be like, why do I need surgery on my knee now? This is terrible. So. Well, I think that really goes to the point that Tracy makes about like, no one can know your body better than you, but yeah. we all do have some kind of element of physical disconnection that I think, you know, we improve as we do things like the method but you have to really have that honest conversation with yourself of, does it make sense for me to, you know, go ahead and do arms without shoes or yeah. do I really actually need to rest? And sometimes, you know, you just get like from a doctor, the advice of take, you know, these pills and rest. And I'm like, athletes don't do that. So you have to figure out like, yeah. what's the thing that's the right thing and I think it just goes back to what Tracy says you have to know you but you also have to have honest conversations yeah 100 percent um so we have a couple of questions in the chat okay like I'm not sure how to say this person's name um l-a-b-i-s-e she said hello I'm newish to Tam six months today happy six congratulations months three um, and I feel like I struggle with form. Are there any tips on working out for form aside from watching the breakdown? Yes, this is a really good point because honestly, I probably struggled with form for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, it's really tough because yes, you have to feel it in your body and there's a lot to remember with the breakdown. So my personal suggestion with that would be keep the weights off until you feel like you have the form. And um, you can also slow down the tempo. So you don't have to keep exactly the same pace. I always think form is more important um, than doing something wrong. Like you definitely don't wanna be flinging your leg. Um, Courtney actually described it to me in a way that worked better for me personally than, um, than when Tracy did because I used to be a swimmer. But you really wanna kind of think about you're in imaginary resistance. So you shouldn't just be like moving around, but you have to kind of create that resistance for yourself. And it took me a long time, especially with um, planks. So when you're on all fours, you wanna make sure that you've got enough space between your um, hands and knees and also that you keep your neck long. So a lot of times what I'll see is like your people's neck will be mm -hmm. kind of short and their shoulders are up. And, and as you like say it's, um, a plank where you're gonna you know extend out with one leg you want to think as you're extending that leg it's kind of like um, a piece of gum <laughs> or something so you're bringing it out but not all the way to the point where you lose control and then you bring it back in and a lot of it is you're using your abs but at the same time bring your head a little bit forward too 
So you want to feel like somebody is kind of pulling your head slightly forward, not in a painful way, at the same time that your leg is going. So you really, I think it's kind of finding that balance of elongation. And don't feel bad if it takes a while, because like I said, it took me at least two years. And only recently, I'm like, oh, that's what Loretta's talking about when she says everything's in her abs. I'm like, nothing was in my abs forever. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and I don't even know if it fully is now, but um, it, it feels better. So that would be my advice. Mm -hmm. um, we have another question from For the Love of Tam. She said, is there a recent talk of Tracy's after class that really resonated with you? Oh, that's a good point. I don't watch them all the time. Um, but I think maybe one, um, I do remember one like at, at the beginning of this year where she talked about being with yourself mm -hmm. and instead of like, whatever it used to say. I don't know if she used to say it or anyone else used to, but it was just kind of like be there for yourself or self-care or whatever, <laughs> but like getting comfortable with yourself to me, that resonates because I feel like you're really the person that matters most. <laughs> Everyone else, like, you know, they can have an opinion about you or whatever, and that's great, but that's theirs. And like true, kind of confidence and acceptance is, can only come from yourself. And it's a ton of hard work and it's never probably done, <laughs> but you can get closer to it. And I feel like, um, I really like that. And then I love that Tracy is honest with the fact that you, you have to work out every day. You can't just work out three days a week. And if anyone's trying to sell you that, you're not gonna really get what you want. Um, so anyway, it's not like, three moves to a perfect butt or something like that. <laughs> it's like yeah. 3,000 moves forever and ever, and then your butt will be great. Right. And it's, it, I mean, it's like a journey without an end. And that's something yeah. that, I mean, it sets Tracy apart so much because it's like others in fitness won't admit the truth. There is yeah. no like workout three days a week for 20 minutes and <laughs> everything will be great. Like we're talking about serious cardiovascular health yeah. and full body muscular structure like it's it's not something that's just a few times a week for a few months a year you know it, <laughs> right it takes me 20 <laughs> minutes just to get warmed up like sometimes mm -hmm. i'll do start arms before i start my full class just because i need to like shake the sleep off my brain or whatever you know it takes time to kind of get into that you know if you really want to follow mm -hmm. um so, yeah. Well, we have a few questions stacking up in the chat. So, um, this question is from Small Talk Tamily. I'm not sure if I follow her. I'm going to have to add her to the list. She said, um, what do you do if you have zero wish to exercise? What is your best motivation? <laughs> uh, I think sometimes that happens. And sometimes I just say, you know what? cool. It's a rest day. <laughs> um, I try not to let that happen too often though, because um, I'm a habits type of person, but I think one of the best things you can do if you're feeling like that is open up your Instagram and just scroll through. You, you might just see two or three posts and be like, all right, Suzanne's working out. I'm going to go get my ass to the mat. So that's kind of my backup plan. Um, if I don't feel it, or I'll text some of my girls <laughs> just like, <laughs> Tell me what to do, even though I know what to do. Sometimes you just need somebody to boss you a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what a network is really for. Um, and I think the best way to support somebody, um, if you've got TM friends, is to ask them how they like to be supported, because not everybody's the same way. For someone else, they might feel like, I don't need this pressure of you telling me, texting me every morning to go work out. <laughs> like, get off my back. <laughs> but once in a while, it, it can be really great. Yeah, like, I think some people have even, like, a, you know, accountability partner or, like, someone yeah. that they specifically check in with. Or, of course, like, having a scheduled Zoom workout or something that's, like, there's no way I would work out yeah. if I didn't know there was <laughs> people waiting for me that I'm supposed to work out with. So, yeah, yeah. That, that definitely makes a difference. Um, Lisa is asking... How do you find the motivation to work out seven days a week? Um, I feel like it's just part of my daily habits now. Um, 
but some days I'll just do start or, you know, do something else. I also find that um, for me personally, and I'm sure for many, music is a huge motivator. So sometimes I need, um, you know, the Beach Boys and Barry Manilow and other days I need Metallica and other days I need hip hop. Um, so I find that music really does help amp me up quite a bit. And if I can like sing along a little bit and get into my I'm super into 70s funk right now. <laughs> so if I can like get in the groove and then also the beats tend to hit with the moves, which is always like, ta-da, magic when that mm -hmm. happens. Because I, I don't listen to Tracy's music, no offense. Um, <laughs> I just can't. Right. So that helps me. So I'd say if, if music kind of pumps you up in that way too, it can be fun. There's tons of great playlists available. I don't know that everybody would care for my personal taste in music, but I know that um, Kristen has great playlists. Um, Jessica, non-glam Tam has some, um, even Scotty, she's got like party, party workout with like super <laughs> club music that I was like, Ooh, I don't know this, but I like it. <laughs> so sometimes just, just a little switch up can help. Well, we have a perfect follow-up question from Rebecca. Okay. She said, what are your top three songs to work out to? Oh, so that is a hard question. We're going to add that to our list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, that's a really good one, though. Um, Some Kind of Wonderful. Woo. Definitely a top. Um, another one of my favorites, which I, I'm... I think I only put two songs on like the hip hop playlist, but it's called Diddy and it's by Paperboy and it's from the nineties, but I don't know why I freaking love that song and I still <laughs> listen to it. And then I would say um, anything by Prince, preferably Jungle Love is like my favorite Prince song, but I'm, I honestly love every single one of his records, like all of it. So Those give me good. some fast beats. <laughs> Um, okay, let me see. We've got a lot of comments in here. Let me see if there's more. Oh, questions. I should be reading. I can't read sideways. I'm like, damn it. It takes <laughs> skill to sit here and listen <laughs> to you and read a sideways question is tough. Um, <laughs> Yaz would like to know what kind of key changes have you seen in your body? Um, so it's a good question. I, I don't weigh myself or anything. I it's just not <clears throat> part of my routine, but um, I have seen more of like a narrowing in my waist. I tend to have a very straight body, and so now I do have somewhat of a waist, which is kind of fun. So I'm like, oh, I don't have to only get like boy fit jeans <laughs> or whatever. Um, but I would also say just my strength has improved so much. Like I remember when um, when I was first starting to try to do like uh, three. Uh, I don't know what, what, what do you call it? Like a downward dog with one leg in the mm -hmm. air. Why yeah. don't I know what that's called? Um, I don't, to do that, would, like <laughs> kill me because I would sink all my weight into my wrists. I had no idea. So now I think about like a string kind of pulling my back and my leg up mm -hmm. and I really put more energy and really try to lift a lot through my back. So I feel overall a lot stronger, even though I don't have like Hercules muscles. I got some pretty good guns, though, to get to the gun show. <laughs> um, Piper has a great question. She said, do you do Tracy's live classes? I do as much as I can. Um, I loved it when they were on the weekend because it was more convenient for my schedule. Unfortunately, I don't think my boss would be like, yeah, on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. <laughs> you can take off for like two hours <laughs> to go do it. Um, but now at least there's the option of renting them. So mm -hmm. I like to do that too. I kind of took a break for a little while when um, my ankle was jacked up, but I've, I've even saved, I don't know if I should say this, some of my other live classes and I'll go back and do like the, I call them super arms, like mm -hmm. as my warm up, um, and do that just cause I don't know. It's just something about it kind of really gets you in the flow for class and it's not too exhausting as long as it's not like a ton of dance cardio in that part, but I yeah. love the super classes. They will super kick your ass, so <laughs> you just have to be prepared for that, but they're really fun. And now that Tracy has, like, reintroduced some other apparatus, like the chair, mm -hmm. I kind of miss the stick, even though I hate the stick, too. Like, I just want to <laughs> throw it, but I, I love it. Um, and even the ball, um, 
in some of the bonus stuff mm-hmm. has been kind of fun. Or the towel, I always feel like a matador, like, oh, I'm just going <laughs> to whip it around. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. And it, it gets a little bit deeper in some of those muscles, mm-hmm. which I love. Yeah, it's really amazing that just because you're holding a ball behind your knee or <laughs> holding on to a towel, that it changes mm-hmm. the way your muscles are working for the move. It's incredible genius. Yes. Um, we have a question from Fit Mama Jama. She said, you tend to work out in long sleeves, but you work out in the garage. Do you do that because you're trying to sweat more or is it just for comfort? <laughs> I'm such a dork. Um, I'll work out even in like mechanics overalls or whatever. I don't know. Um, everyone like in the north will just immediately slap me across the face, but it like is cold in Florida to me <laughs> right now. Um, and even though I do have a little heater out there, it's cold. Um, but I feel like the layers help. Sometimes um, in the summer, I'll even wear sleeves if there's like a lot of moves that have friction because I'll end up getting like, I don't know, Mm -hmm. I would describe it as like a mat burn or a towel burn, you know, after a couple days of the class. Um, So it keeps me from like slip and sliding because it it gets really sweaty out there. Um, And that's why you'll never see me work out in shorts either. I'm always going to have it on. And I don't think it makes me warmer necessarily. I just feel like it gives me um, more traction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That makes I hate to be cold. And sweat against the mat is so gross. So gross. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> um, we have another question from For the Love of Tam. So I really didn't need any planned questions for this. <laughs> um, Hi, Erica, by the way. <laughs> um, she said, do you beat yourself up if you eat something really indulgent? Or are you okay when you indulge? Personally, I always beat myself up and am looking for some words of wisdom. Well, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll first say this, like nobody come to me for diet advice, but um, I don't do diets. I don't have any rules around food because for me, restriction or guilt is like the worst thing that I can have. So if I want a Snickers bar, which is kind of like my guilty, whatever indulgence, I'll eat it. And I feel zero regret. I do not care. I'm like, I'm so happy I ate this. And I try to like think about it in the moment. Like I'm really loving eating this thing right now. Um, I've even made Chef Priscilla's like vegan Snickers, which they're a ton of work to make, but they're so good if you ever make them and then just cut them up small and keep them in the freezer. But my advice would be like, you can either feel bad or like (laughs) worry about the calories of something, or is this going to make my arm flabby or whatever, or how about let's just live our one life? I don't know. (laughs) I'm like, it's okay. I'm always going to have a little bit of fat, be a little bit fat. It does not bother me um, in any sense of the matter. And I don't think that anyone else is judging me for it. So I say go for it. Um, (laughs) Enjoy, especially indulgence. It's like a once in a while treat. You're not doing it all the time. Yeah, I think that the same thing about like having that honest conversation with yourself like you know if you've eaten the whole sleeve of oreos or (laughs) if you should have a few oreos and some milk because that's what you want you know i mean there is balance and honesty but there's also you know we're consuming everything we think and feel just like everything that we eat and negative feelings and negative self-talk and being down on ourselves is as bad for our health as you know, brownies. So yeah, I mean, think about you could go back and like, look at pictures from when you were a teenager, and you were probably probably like a beautiful teenager in a bathing suit and whatever. And at that time, you probably thought, and you're like picking yourself apart and being like, Oh, why am I so fat? And now I look, I'm like, I wish I was fat like I was back then. (laughs) Right. I wish I was as fat as when I thought I was fat. (laughs) Years of like, self-depreciating because of yeah I just hate that the sooner you can find Tracy the sooner you can find the right (laughs) yes um yes that's a question and I'm just gonna say these questions are all like going together very well I think everyone in the chat has become very good ass Tamley interviewers (laughs) Um, so yes said what do you love to splurge on 
cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I had them last night. <laughs> oh, yum. I'm like, I love a good cheeseburger. Just give, give it to me. Lots of mustard, pickles. Go for it. Um, I also love a crispy onion ring, but, you know, I don't get that very often. So I'm a savory person over sweet. Um, I also love Triscuits, which I know they're not ne necessarily bad for you, but... <laughs> If you saw my stash in my pantry, you might be like, how many of these BOGO <laughs> Triscuits did you need? <laughs> we all have our thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yaz would also like to know, how much coffee do you have before you get on the mat? Oh, that's a good question. I love coffee. Um, most of the time, though, I don't have any beforehand, not because I don't want to, but usually I got to just get going. And if I make myself a coffee, I'll have a tendency to keep reaching for it and sipping it like in between reps. And I don't <laughs> want to do that. Um, so yeah, I usually don't have any until after I just chug some water, get to town. That's very good. I sip coffee the entire time I work out, even if it's in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me see. There's a ton of co comments in here. Okay. Here's another question from small talk. She said, how do you help your body recover? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I try to drink a lot of water. I'm not good at it. So I just have to remind myself, like, drink a lot of water. I'm not a huge, like, vitamin person. I do take fiber. And another PSA, everybody should just take fiber. It's completely good for you. And um, colon health is really important, even if you eat super healthy. Um take fiber. But um, I will, like once a week, I'll do um, like an Epsom and magnesium soak mm -hmm. in hot water, which I find that that helps quite a bit. Um, but I will say, as I've um, figured out and kind of learned my way through the method a bit more, I don't have as much soreness or like wrist soreness or knee soreness as I used to have. Um, what I do have, though, is like the driest kneecaps on the planet. <laughs> it's like an elephant skin. I don't know what the hell this is. Um, I have even tried like fancy like face exfoliators. I was like, maybe if I put this on my knee, it will exfoliate <laughs> it. Um, so a lot of times I'm just like rubbing cream into my skin to try to help it. But I don't really do anything special. Okay. Um, Char Loves Cam would like to know, what is your favorite city to visit? Oh, Sharona. I mean, that's hard to say because, of course, I love California and I got to meet her there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, my favorite city to visit is just anywhere that I've got people. Um, personally, I, I miss Scottsdale because that's where I lived for most of my life and my dad and my brothers are there. So I love to go visit there. Plus I can go get some hiking in. Um, I like Florida, but it's like legit flat. There's, I probably live on the one hill in my county and it's like a 13 <laughs> foot incline. It's like nothing. Um, so I love anywhere where I can go and like get outdoors. Um, I really miss Atlanta too. <clears throat> when I lived in Atlanta and Buckhead, there's just like so much to do, culture, and museums and art and Again, all these things I'm like longing to go see because I only see my beige walls. Maybe I'll have to paint something bright. Um, we have a question from Kylie. She said, any recommendations regarding weight distribution? I feel a lot of work in my arms while I'm doing TAM and I've heard that's not the aim. Yeah. Well, I would say if you're feeling it in arms while you're doing any moves that are planks or leg lifts. This is um, one of those things, and I kind of talked about it earlier too. I, you have to kind of figure out how to start using your back, and really the best way to do that, and I think anytime you move up through the levels of TAM, at least my recommendation is to start with no weights again, almost like you're starting over, so that you figure out the form and you get comfortable with the form before you have weight, because otherwise that weight is gonna push down and you don't really want to kind of jack yourself up through a plank just because you're muscling through it um, because you'll end up with like super bulky traps like a WWE wrestler and <laughs> nobody wants that. They're hard to get rid of. <laughs> so um, I would just say weights aren't as important um, and just really try to think about 
lifting through your back because yeah you don't you don't really want to be pushing off your hands and wrists from a, a distribution standpoint I wish we could hover that would be like so <laughs> ideal <laughs> I think that's such good advice though about the weights because I think people feel like they have to use the weights or they're not yeah. doing the workout completely or even they have to do advanced or they must not be doing yeah. the workout right and really I mean the workout is almost difficult in a different way without the weights and it gives you that like really sense of you know the destination for your leg or like feeling it in a different way maybe feeling it you know more um deeply or something yeah so true um l boogie tam would like to know if you have met tracy or taken one of her classes in person hi lauren um, no, I've never met Tracy, um, but I have met some of her badass trainers, <laughs> and I've um, taken some classes at the studio, um, so maybe one day I'll meet Tracy. I tried to, like, do one of the Vitality Weeks, but it ended up um, being canceled or moved or something like that, but um, it's, like, a whole other level to take class in the studio or with the trainer. Um, it's just so fun too, because everybody's got their own kind of style and different body type, different music. And sometimes you can actually connect even more because one of the trainers may feel like more similar to you personally or move more like you do. And then you're just like, this is magic. Like I'm loving it. Um, like Courtney's classes, Lashana's classes. I've taken both um, in the studio in New York and Claire. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it would be, this is like weird to say, but kind of disappointing to take yeah. the class that wasn't with Tracy. And then I almost died during free arms. And I was like, <laughs> actually, they all know what they're doing. And they're all amazing. And they do have yes. those differences that you might just connect more with a style. And I think yeah. sometimes too, seeing the trainers, especially different ones, do the same moves, you like might understand it in a different mm -hmm. way, um, which is another reason for the pandemic to end. So we can have those different, you know, views yeah. of the classroom and then of course going to the studio. So what studios have you been to? So I've been to 59th Street um, in New York and then I've been up to Watermill in the Hamptons, which is really beautiful, it has all those windows. And then, um, oh my God, is it called Studio City? Oh. I think it is. Sharona might have to correct me um, in California. And that's it so far. I got to get to Madrid. Mm -hmm. Like, please, right now, <laughs> tell them for me. I want to go. I'd love to go work out in London. I don't think there's actually a studio there, but I know that like Kelly Bolly's there and there's some other trainers there too. So. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, we've had an amazing stream of questions in the chat. Yay. So back to some planned questions. Um, how do you feel about dance cardio? So it's like love, hate. <laughs> um, I like the dances that are high energy without a lot of traveling and like cross stepping over your own legs. Um, I think what's hard for me is um, I used to dance, but I used to swing dance. And so I'm very comfortable and much better in terms of performance when I have the resistance of a partner. Mm -hmm. So there's always like this push and pull and you're moving together. And it feels very weird to me to dance alone. Because mm -hmm. um, at least like at a club when you're dancing or something, there's like other people around mm -hmm. you too. <laughs> um, and I was like never, never a cheerleader or anything like that. So sometimes like choreography, Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fantastic to watch and it's very cool, but I'm like, uh, I don't know. I could Vogue, I could do like Madonna, <laughs> but the rest of it, I feel like very kind of klutzy. <laughs> so I love the 15 minute bonus cardios. Um, those are great. And sometimes I'll do that just as like a warm up if I really feel like I need to get warmed up before a class. And, I, but I'm still trying to learn dances cause I feel like I just want to, and I have the floor, but, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. We'll see. I sent a little clip of a video to Courtney and I was like, can we put part of this move in there? Uh, so we'll see. Who knows? Maybe she'll surprise me one day. 
Um, Tam Life would like to know, do you dress up to work out or do you just put whatever on? I don't dress up. <laughs> um, I do have some fun pants. Like I have a collection of fun pants, but it's mostly hobo town, <laughs> like whatever, <laughs> sweatshirt, uh, lots of layers of stuff. I think, um, I find it so awesome. Like when people are dressed up, you know, I find it motivating. I, I don't know. I feel like it's not me as much. I'm like, just do whatever feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, you know, maybe you feel really good to like put on a little bit of lipstick or something before mm -hmm. you go tam or to me, I would be so sweaty and it would be like smeared all over my towels. <laughs> and I'd be like, mm, I can do that. Um, but I think that's one of the coolest things about the method is you really don't even need much. It's not like you need to have fancy workout clothes. I mean, I once worked out in jeans. Mm -hmm. I do not recommend, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I did do it because I think my luggage was late or something like that. Yeah, so I didn't totally. have any other um, clothes, but yeah, you can do whatever. I think whatever your kind of personal style is, whatever makes you feel like comfortable and you can get in the groove, go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, Tam Life has another great question. She said, does the floor help with the mat workout? Yes. I, it to me is like an unexpected surprise, although I should have known some of this from the studios, but from a balance perspective, it gives you more, um, work to do because you have a little bit of, um, wiggliness on the floor. <laughs> um, and it will keep you from getting lazy. So you will not drop that weight down or like, you know, thump your foot down because you'll hear it. <laughs> you'll be like, well, who, who's that elephant in here with me? Like, what just happened? Um, so it does. It gives you a lot of good signals. And, um, and then I will say part of like the bare floor, if there's moves where you have to swivel your foot or something, mm -hmm. much easier than trying to do it, especially if you have like a thick yeah. mat or something that might kind of trip you up a little bit. Yeah, I feel like just having the floor so that it isn't carpet or yeah. you know, getting rid of carpet in an area. It, to me, it's like carpet is not very helpful with no. something we have to do. <laughs> no. Um, Deanna would like to know what time of day is your preference for working out? Okay, my preference would be like 9 a.m. But mm -hmm. reality is like, since I've been working from home, I, I do have more freedom. So it's usually around seven. Um, when I had to travel before, it would be like 4.30 or five, which is despised. I hate, <laughs> I don't like it. I could never get up early enough to like spend more time to warm up or anything like that. So it's just like, it is what it is. But yeah, I feel like 9 a.m. between nine and 10 a.m. would be perfect. Maybe one day I'll win the lottery and retire and work out every day <laughs> at that time. I know, I really, it would be just ideal if I could, like, go get coffee, you know, somewhere <laughs> fun, then meet up with some friends, then start the workout at, you know, 10, and just yeah. do every day, like, we're on a family meetup every day. <laughs> that <laughs> would be, like, all my this dream. career stuff is about. <laughs> yeah, what is this, paying bills? This is for the birds. <laughs> I'm not into that. Um... Small talk also is asking, um, how many hours do you sleep on average? Okay, that's a good question. I'm going to ask Small Talk. Please tell me your first name as well because it's not in your profile. So I need you to tell me. Um, <laughs> hours that I sleep, my preferred would be like nine. I don't get oh. to do that. <laughs> Usually, um, if I don't get seven hours of sleep, I like strategically cannot think and do my job. It's, it's very, very hard. It's something that I struggle with. Um, so I started taking GABA pills <laughs> at night. It's like natural. Um, a friend of mine who's going through some fertility treatments had recommended it. And so that's kind of a natural sleep aid. Um, so that will help. But uh, you just have to not watch TV. Sometimes I'll try to like do some of my less interesting reading, like tedious reading or something, try to get myself to fall asleep early enough. Because, yeah, without it, it's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> um, Lisa would like to know, what advice do you have for some of us newbies? Although I'm not sure I would really consider Lisa a newbie still. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, I, I feel like you're like me, though, to where I, I will say I'm new until no one will let me get away with it anymore. Because there's something so special about being new and um, 
being curious and kind of embracing that aspect of it. So I, I also do that at work all the time. I'll be like, I'm new. And they're like, you've been here two years. You're not new. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the best thing that you can do, and, you know, again, each of us are so different. So what works for me may not work exactly for someone else. But I try to think about, like, what's the one thing that I can do that will actually have an impact on many other things in my life. So if you're new to TAM and you're trying to figure out how can I be more consistent or how can I get from start to fundamental, right? You need to find another 30 minutes. You know, I'll kind of do a lot of thinking and usually what it always comes back to for me is I need to go to bed earlier, which I never <laughs> want to do. But if I go to bed earlier, I can get up earlier. I can have my workout earlier and have a little bit more time. I can have more time to have coffee and get ready. So I think um, depending what your goal is, you know, if, if you're trying to increase your time or if you're trying to um, increase your frequency, you got to think about within your own kind of world, what what is one change that can help the most? I'm not a fan of like having 7,000 goals. <laughs> it just doesn't work for me. I'm like a high focus person. Um, so that would, that would be my recommendation. And reach out. Um, you can always reach out to me. Tons of Tamley are very responsive. Um, so if you have questions or you're like, I'm not sure about this move and I've watched the breakdown and it's not helping me or whatever. I mean, I feel like everyone is really helpful, totally open to supporting you. So figure out what you need and then vocalize what you need. And there will be one of us there to help you out. Definitely. That is what is super amazing about this community. Yeah. Um, Fit Mama Jama would like to know, what books are you currently reading? Oh, I'm reading a couple of books. Some of them, so my boss constantly assigns reading every day, like, like he thinks we have all this extra time, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't need to read a marketing book. I'm like, have a degree in marketing. I can teach <laughs> marketing. Thank you for sending me this. Um, but <laughs> I'm reading this book called Wintering. Um, that I got as a Christmas gift. And it's really about kind of how to go through the process of loss or grief or like major change, which seems like a super heavy book, but um, it's quite interesting and eye-opening. I also read a lot um, about like strengths, individual strengths and strengths-based leadership type of things, just because I'm very dorked out, geeked out <laughs> on Gallup and <laughs> helping to develop people and understand because I think everyone in the world has great talents. Sometimes they just need to be unlocked and they need to be coached in a way that will help them become their best version of themselves. So I read that stuff and read profiles and do a little bit of coaching on that front too. Excellent. Well, um, I think that's all the questions in the chat, but okay. now we have six minutes left. <laughs> We can do speed rounds. Think fast. <laughs> um, have you converted anyone to being a devoted Tamer? One person. <laughs> and I, I don't try anymore, but actually my, one of my best friends, Anna, um, she works with me and she does it now. She used to do Orange Theory and she's like an ultimate like runner, track star. She ran, you know, at UF. She's awesome. She actually came and tammed with me in the garage too. And she started out and like, she essentially went straight to attain and kicked so much ass. I'm like, how did you do this? I could not do that. Um, so she's done it. I've had a few other people get curious enough to ask me about it or ask me about it kind of off and on for years. And I'm just like, just come over and try it. Jeez, please, like, keep asking me. Um, but yeah, only one person. I really feel like for the method, I don't even talk about it to people anymore. Um, and if they ask me, I'm like, do you really want to know? Because if you're just asking me as like a whatever question, like don't. Because <laughs> otherwise I'll like go fully into it. But it's not for everybody, but it is for awesome people. <laughs> I always say for elite people yes. doing elite workout. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nicole has a very deep question for you. Okay. She says, what is something you severely dislike and avoid at all costs? And what is something that you love so much you incorporate into your life every day? Wow. <laughs> <gasps> okay. Damn. 
severely dislike would be Excel spreadsheets. It's like the <laughs> antithesis of everything that I am. Unfortunately, I'm like forced to look at them and use them all the time and I've had to <laughs> learn how to use it, but I'm not a math person. Um, so I avoid those and I will do all of my work in writing in Word and PowerPoint and then send it to the spreadsheet people. And I feel like we have a great balance. Like I help them, they help me. Uh, and it's, it's great. So I avoid <laughs> Excel spreadsheets. Um, something that I love and want to do every day. I mean, other than the method, um, I don't know, reach out, like connect with at least one person that is important in my life. I have to do that every day. Not always the same person, but, um, I don't know. I was thinking a lot earlier this year, just like I wanted to be closer to my brothers. Because A, I'm the oldest and my brothers are great, <laughs> but they're boys too. So they're not going to like naturally reach out to me and be like, hey, sis, <laughs> tell me this or that. <laughs> so I've been making like a really conscious effort to spend more time with my brothers. And it's been awesome because we have like, I have phone call alternate weeks with each of them. And, um, you know, I feel like as we get older, you know, we will all lose our parents, unfortunately, at some point in time and whatever. And your siblings and your friends are probably going to be around with you the longest if you don't have kids like I don't. <laughs> so um, I think personal relationships are key and you got to invest in the ones that um, mean the most to you. So, yeah, that's a, especially important in like all of the quarantining and pandemic and no travel. <laughs> yeah. Like we can get all swallowed up in this like work from home 24 hours a day and everything else that's going on. But you do have to just make sure to connect. Yeah. Well, we have three minutes left. So I'm going to pick one more question. Okay. Um, hmm. Who would you like to see in a future Ask Tamley interview? Okay, so many. I've made a list to send to you guys, but if I okay. choose one person that I would like to have come up next, uh, Tara Stress. We got to get her on the list. Okay. She's okay. willing to do it. I asked her. Um, so oh, all right. And she is just a badass queen. And once I can get back to New York, uh, we're going to go singing and I'll be like her super backup singer, like so far away from the mic that you can't hear how terribly I sing. But just so that I can, like, be in her amazingness. Oh, I want to go, too. It'll be fun. It will. Um, we have one more question that popped up in the chat, which I also had on the list. RVA Love would like to know, what are you having for dinner tonight? Uh, okay, I'm making chili. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> because it's obviously the Super Bowl and my boyfriend, Tom Brady, and the Bucks. <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> you gotta get with it but you gotta make chili the day, the night before I don't know about everybody else but it's like I gotta let all right. my spices marinate and everything so I'll be making yeah. chili and then I'm also gonna do um a roasted turkey breast and turn it into a, a veggie turkey soup so it's kind of like fridge clean out day mm -hmm. I'm a no team no waste Catherine Roz will know what that is too <laughs> so I'm like constantly trying to figure out okay I'm gonna make stock I'm gonna make something so that's what I'll be doing you'll see me chop 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 pretty soon excellent well emily this interview with you absolutely flew by and i don't think we've ever had this many questions in the chat so <laughs> i wish i could see them all i'm so i feel like they disappear after this do. so if you guys said something awesome hilarious thank you so much thanks everybody for joining you guys are we are the best community so we do and, and emily thank the next you one. for being an inspirational Double ass Tamily star. We <laughs> love talking to you and love all of your advice and your perspective. Love you guys. Well, thank you, Tamily, for watching. Bye. Have a great Super Bowl tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye, guys.